Deep under the Appalachian Mountains, in an area that includes New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and parts of Virginia, there's an enormous layer of black shale rock. It covers 18 million acres and is anywhere from 5,000 to 9,000 feet deep. There is natural gas held in the pores of this rock, but until recently, it has been impractical to extract it. Higher fuel prices and new developments in mining techniques have opened these fields for resource extraction through the process of horizontal drilling and hydrofracturing of the deep sublayer. This involves deep drilling rigs cooled by enormous quantities of water, often trucked to the site and infused with proprietary chemical mixtures. The water is then forced into long horizontal shafts to fracture the rock and release the gas. The Marcellus Shale Formation, as the area is named, contains the second largest deposit of natural gas in the country. It is attracting the most powerful players in the energy industry. In Pennsylvania so far this year, ground has been broken on three new deep wells every day. While this opens new energy resources and contributes to the economy, there are very real environmental and community impacts. Well, yeah, maybe water. I'm hauling a little bit further, damn it. You know, it comes between the bar and the house. There's two times. About a little over two weeks ago, I developed a very large problem with Chesapeake Energy. They laid a water line down along the road uh, and they're taking water from Fish Creek. They're using 360 horsepower diesel engines to uh, withdraw this water. The noise uh, has totally destroyed my home. West Virginia is an extremely rich state in terms of resources and I've put some of the resources that um, have been exploited in the past Question for you. Where do you think West Virginia sits economically compared to other states? I, I, I didn't hear a lot of people say hi. <laughs> uh, West Virginia is generally considered to be an Appalachian region in a very poor state. My question is why? We've gone through timber booms, we've gone through coal, boom, coal booms, oil and shallow gas, and now we're into Marcellus shale gas. So my question to officials always is, we're a poor state. We're a rich state. How are you going to achieve a benefit for us? This particular truck was carrying diesel fuel and it gives you an idea, this is one of our larger access roads. And again, there was a house here, you can see the truck here, and that's the only thing that stopped him from rolling into the house. Now, another thing to keep in mind whenever you see one of these, these roads are closed for four to eight hours when this happens. What happens if I got a guy on the other end with a heart attack? Hey, you got a uh, water truck, a loaded water truck in front of you, loaded uh, gravel bucket. You get up on him, he'll take you over. Basically what we've got is we've got a single <coughs> permit request for a single site in Bergton, which is in the headwaters of the North Fork of the Shenandoah. It's in through the gap at Coots's store, up in second, third order, fir actually first and second order streams, up in the very, very headwaters near West Virginia. I think Virginia and, 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 and this part of the state is in a unique situation to um, be ahead of the curve on this Marcellus Shell play, whereas it took Pennsylvania by storm, it took West Virginia by storm, and they were just handing out leases left and right. And now they're starting to realize what the potential impacts are. We have an opportunity to learn from maybe some of their mistakes and what's going on in, in those states um, to try to do it better um, uh, here in Virginia, um, at least do it in, in a more reasonable and environmentally friendly way if it is going to happen altogether. So what they've so originally what they asked for was um, and there's two things that they two hurdles that the 
that the company had to jump over in order to get approval to do this. The first was to obtain a, um, a permit from DMME, Department of Mines, Minerals, and Energy. My personal view was that that was not going to be a very high hurdle for them to obtain. They basically had to meet the requirements of the permit, and they would be issued a permit. And we said, we've got to go to the county level. And so that's, what, like Seth said, we went to the meeting. We just said, hang on. You know, we all basically said, we're totally unprepared to make this decision. This is a big deal. And even though it's just one well, it's the, you know, it's the chink in the armor. It's potentially going to be many, many, many wells in large places. And they heard that, and they put it off. And then so, since then, we've been, as a, as, as a group and the, with the citizens, deeply involved in this as well. We're doing it backwards. We're trying to have a small, county, small rural county area uh, figure out what are the regulations that should be in place for a whole state, as opposed to having uh, you know, the, the research and, and the information at hand and the regulations in place and then looking at specific wells. So, you know, we're, we're trying to put our finger in the dike here. I and mean, that's, that's essentially where we are. So the Forest Service is gonna, gonna make a new decision about whether the George Washington National Forest is open to oil and gas development. Uh, we think they need to think very carefully about that. There's new information, there's hydraulic fracturing going on. There are problems in Pennsylvania, there are problems in New York, there are problems in West Virginia. Uh, and, and that was not the case in 1993 when they decided to open the National Forest up. At that time, uh, natural gas prices were low. The only drilling that had occurred uh, was a few wells here and there. And they weren't expecting a big boon. So it was kind of easy for them to say, okay, it's open, because I don't think they expected much to happen, and not much has happened. But now there's a whole different specter out there. But they need to hear from you the citizens uh, that, that you think this is a big issue. Although the regulations have some well spacing requirements, they're really designed for well by well permitting. So I think a huge issue that's come up in other states, New York uh, has probably had the most uh, aggressive reaction to this, but it's happened in other states as well, is it's one thing to look at your well by well permitting applications. It's another thing to look at the cumulative impacts of all the permit applications that might come in. And right now, the state doesn't have any procedure for looking at the, the, looking at the big picture, how many Marcellus uh, shale uh, uh, drilling applications are we likely to get, what are the cumulative impacts of all those going to be, and what's the overall uh, level of drilling that's compatible with the, um, uh, the level of production that we want to see, but also the level of uh, environmental protection and quality of life issues. Um, th there's none of that that's built into the uh, certainly the Oil and Gas Act, and that's going to be really a critical thing if, if, if more of these applications start pouring in, trying to get the, the leadership and the state agencies to take a step back and look at those big picture. And don't, don't look for the state under current regulations to play a big role in this. If something's going to change and we're going to do it differently than Pennsylvania or New York, people are going to have to get upset and make a lot of noise because the table is set, as it is in most states, for the oil and gas industry to do what they do and do it expeditiously and not have to spend a lot of extra money complying with environmental regulations. That's, that's the current lay of the land.